Hi everyone, I'm Suzanne. My partner Faith and I are here to teach you the field method of fish gut content analysis, or GCA. First things first, why would someone ever want to look at fish's stomach contents? Well, gut content analysis provides important insight into fish feeding patterns. Feeding a fish represents an integration of a lot of important ecological components like behavior, condition, habitat use, energy intake, and several others. Accurate description of fish diets and feeding habits also provides the basis for understanding trophic interactions in aquatic food webs. The simplest purpose of GCA is to determine the most frequently consumed prey or determine whether a specific food category is present in the stomach. However, you may be interested in more specific questions like what's the importance of different food items for fish nutrition, or you may want to understand foraging trade-offs associated with predator avoidance. All of these can be answered by studying fish stomach contents. Now that we know the why, let's move on to the how. Step one seems like the easy part, but you have to plan appropriately. If you have a hypothesis or question you want answered quickly, then you have to be willing to alter your hypothesis for your given time frame, or be willing to ask for help in retrieving fish. If your hypothesis or question is narrow, then you have to consider the specific details of your question when you start planning for your field days. What type of fish do you want to catch? Where will you find those fish? What's the best time of day to catch them? What type of bait do you use? Then you have to choose your field locations and make sure you have everything ready. Now that we have every detail planned out, it's time for the fun part. Step two for this field method is to get your fishing gear together and go catch some fish. You plan on having a nice relaxing day out in nature, a tranquil lake, or the crashing of waves at the ocean is just what you needed to get your brain out of science mode, even though you're still doing science. Unfortunately, your plans are all shot the hill. The fish aren't biting. Your field day of peace and quiet with nature are down the drain because you just can't collect data. By the end of the day, you're so frustrated that you just want to give up. So now what? You can't go home empty-handed. A quick fix for when the fish just don't want to give themselves up for science is to go talk to the professionals. You will always find a fishmonger, a deckhand, a dock worker, someone who is willing to help you out. Even if all they can give you today is live bait like anchovies or sardines, that's still something you can take home and practice on. You can also take a charter boat. There are charter companies everywhere that are willing to help people catch fish. It'll cost you extra for their help, but this will guarantee you get data. No matter how you get your fish, you need to study the gut contents immediately or freeze the fish whole or preserve it to prevent further digestion. So you got your fish, now what? First thing to do is to find the pectoral fins. These are the fins on both sides of the fish. Here you'll find a set of bones stretching from the spine to the belly. Next, you need to look at the underside of the fish and find the anal vent. In between these two points is the fish's stomach. You need to be very careful after this part to make sure you don't cut anything you shouldn't be. Get a sharp knife and some tweezers ready. Put on a pair of gloves and make your first cut from the anal vent all the way up to the gills, making sure not to cut too deep. It's okay if you have to cut a couple of times. Open up the fish a little bit, then cut a line up the side of the fish between the eyes and the pectoral fins so you can clearly see the internal organs of the fish. Warning! The following video is rated S for science due to its graphic contents and may not be suitable for small children or the easily nauseated. Hello! So for mine and Suzanne's fish gut content analysis, we decided to go fishing and review the state of the fish's stomachs. So here is a mackerel that I caught off the pier in Ventura and I'm going to make a careful incision alongside the gills and on the underbelly of the stomach while being careful not to puncture any of the organs. Here, I'm just gently prying it open along the incision because I don't want to make another incision that's too deep and maybe puncture one of the organs. I froze these fish immediately after I got home um, and then I let them thaw 
before dissecting them and even so the fish this fish looks very healthy um, all of its organs look healthy and there was no external injuries beforehand either so that black little sack is its stomach it's a lot smaller um, than you would think but it actually looks quite full which is a good sign so I'm gonna carefully remove the stomach so that we can observe it a bit more closely I'm gonna make a gentle incision and then I'm gonna open it up so we can review the content Immediately, there's a lot of sand. It looks like there's some um, seaweed in there. It does not look like it ate any other fish or had an actual meal. It just looks like it's mainly sand and seaweed. I tried to spread it a lot thinner so I could see if maybe there was just, it was just food that it had chewed. Um, but it didn't look like it. It felt and looked exactly like sand. So although this fish's stomach was entirely full, it looks like it didn't really have uh, too much of a substantial meal. This is the second fish from Ventura. It's also a mackerel. It looks a little bit smaller in size and it has an injury to the end of its fin that was um, there prior to us catching it. So already its insides look a lot different than the first fish. Uh, the stomach was also a lot harder to find. I could swap the other stomach almost immediately, and in this one I had to search around for it a bit, but it's there. It's that, that deflated little sack, um, which immediately isn't a good sign because you can tell it hasn't been eating anything. I tried to spread it a bit thinner to see if maybe there was something inside, but there was not. So this fish maybe had just digested its food or maybe it just uh, doesn't have a lot to eat in general and I think maybe the injury may play a factor in that. As you can see, GCA is a very delicate research tool that takes time and patience. It's used in the understanding of many aspects of fish ecology on individual, population, community, and ecosystem levels. It helps us study and explain specific problems of interactions, evolution, speciation, invasions, and even fishery management. As a result, stomach content studies can be incorporated into a variety of different research objectives. I hope you all learned a little something today. Thanks for watching.